What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo and we have yet another battle with the Mega Gyarados team today. Uh, this battle is against X Square Stick. Actually, he used to upload a while ago and he actually has his side of this battle up on his channel. So please go check it out. I don't know if he will actually be getting back into uploading regularly or not, but uh, back when he used to upload regularly, I really enjoyed his content. And he's a pretty good battler too, so uh, definitely worth checking out. You may have noticed from the team preview that I actually switched out Clefable for a Fortress. Uh, I just wanted the more, Clefable was kind of a stopgap as far as momentum went for this team, and this is a more offensive team, so having a really slow Volt Switch user was more useful, and as you'll see in this battle, worked out a lot better. Now I ended up starting off with Raikou in this battle just because with Assault Vest, I basically could take on everything but Heatran, um, and I could still hit Heatran, I just didn't expect to do much damage to it. Uh, but I knew Heatran couldn't do much back to me outside of Earth Power, and that wouldn't do much from a defensive Heatran. Uh, this is a good opportunity to set up my stealth rocks. We kind of just exchanged rocks at the beginning of the match. I wanted to go ahead and get Minot because I knew he had Talon Flame. Didn't really want to deal with that. Uh, based on the damage that he did with U-Turn, though, I'm actually thinking that he's banded a little bit more than I expected it to do. And we actually end up both going for U-Turn. I just went for U-Turn, didn't thinking that he would not want to go straight for Brave Bird that early in the match. And so I'm able to bring uh, Landorus out here. And I also find out that the Sylveon has Rocky Helmet which gives me the, the idea that it's a defensive Sylveon. Um, I go out into Gengar hoping that he doesn't have Psy Shock as an option. Uh, also hoping maybe he'll just go straight for Hyper Voice and I'll get a sub up and I'll have it for the next thing. And he does go for Hyper Voice and of course um, moves that are sound based moves go through substitutes. Unfortunately he gets the critical hit. Uh, I really wanted to have a substitute for the next Pokemon that he brought in which was the main reason I went for sub, otherwise it would have just gone straight for uh, the Sludge Bomb. But that's okay, uh, I, I get the, the moral victory in poisoning him, which doesn't really matter at all. He's at such low HP that anything will take him out at that point. Uh, losing Gengar that early in the battle really, really sucked. It would have been great to have Gengar for the shenanigans against things like Glaceon, and of course I could have easily taken out the Sylveon without taking all this recoil damage on my Tornadus. Uh, just between Stealth Rocks, Rocky Helmet, and Life Orb, I'm now at half HP, and all, I just did one move. So, here the way he brought in Glaceon, I was really worried that it was Scarfed, because I, I guess he was just super confident in its ability to take moves, and Glaceon actually has pretty high base defense and high special attack. Um, and I hadn't really actually fought a Glaceon in 6th Gen, so I wasn't sure what to expect. I didn't know it was his signature Pokemon, so I knew it would be no slouch, of course. He ends up going for Yawn as I hard switched out into my Raikou and that's okay because I can just volt switch out of there now and he goes for wish and I was like okay I'm getting a better idea of a set since he has wish I'm thinking that he's more defensive uh, and for some reason I was just I was really hesitant to go for a gyro ball I wanted to get rid of the entry hazards and I was afraid he'd go for yawn again and I wanted to get rid of the entry hazards more than I want to sleep fodder right now and I didn't really have a reason to go for Sleep Fodder. I figured if he had Protect, he would show it to me here. Um, and he actually just goes for Wish again. So I'm able to Volt Switch out again, avoiding uh, falling asleep because of Yawn. And I can go back out into my Raikou. Uh, it would have been interesting if I had carried Aura Sphere to this battle instead of this Raikou that has Hidden Power Ice. I have quite a few Raikou. And um, Raikou is my second favorite out of legendary dogs with Entei being the first favorite but just Raikou fits in really well on this team and since I have Assault Vest I figured I could take his Ice Beams pretty well and I guess I just underestimated Glaceon's special attack because I took that a little worse than I thought I would actually but we continue with the Volt Switch shenanigans I'm just going to go out into Fortress this time and uh, hopefully he's going to yawn but I was actually hoping he would stay in because I finally went for Gyro Ball right there as he switches out into Heatran so I definitely expected him to just continue the wishing and yawning. Eventually I would have caught him and gone out into something more offensive. But I just really like Fortress here. If I had gone for the Volts, which I would have been really, really ahead in the battle. But that's okay. I'm not too big of a slouch at hard switching. I figured he would actually set up his Stealth Rocks again. And so I take the opportunity to just switch right onto my Tornadus. Um, and he actually goes for Lava Plume. So that kind of sucked. If he had just set up the Stealth Rocks there, I would have been able to take two Lava Plumes after um, I would have been able to hit him and then switch out and I would still have my Tornadus. But I didn't want to pass up the opportunity to put some solid damage on this Heatran. Uh, 
uh, and I am gonna go down to the secondary lava plume, especially after Life Orb recoil. But now that he's at that range of HP, hopefully I can finish him off a little bit more easily. Once Heatran goes down, Fortress kinda has a field day with his team unless his Sceptile has hidden power of fire. That was the only other thing that I needed to check for, really. But this is a good opportunity to come in and Mega Evolve. I did not know if his Heatran had Roar. I was hoping he didn't have Roar. And I'm just gonna come in and substitute. I could not just come in and go for Waterfall, because if I came in and did that, especially if I Mega Evolved, he could just go out to his Sceptile and either set up or just kill me with a Grass-type move. So, I was kind of forced to go for a Substitute, uh, hoping that I could get up a Dragon Dance. But he does have Roar, so that sucks. I expected to just be able to KO him here with a Thunderbolt, but he has Protect, so he's able to get an extra turn of Leftovers Recovery, which ends up mattering. Um, I think he survives this Thunderbolt with 28 HP, which is the equivalent of two turns of Leftovers, basically, for him. So if I had just gone for Waterfall there, that... I would have taken care of the Heatran, but at the same point, he could have brought in Sceptile for free. And I did not want to see Sceptile just coming in like that, that, um, that easily for free. And unfortunately, here I go for Volt Switch. He lives with 1 HP. I really should have just gone for the regular um, Thunderbolt. I, don't, I, I just thought Volt Switch would KO, and I also was afraid he'd switch to preserve his Heatran to get up rocks later. Just completely overpredicted there. I should have just gone for Thunderbolt. But that's okay. I don't get burned by any of these Lava Plumes, which is kind of a little bit of reverse hacks in itself. Lava Plume has the same chance of burning a Skull, and I just, I get burned by Skull all the time, and I don't get burned by Lava Plume for some reason. Now he does switch into his own Gyarados here, which is actually a Taunt Gyarados with Dragon Dance. I just stayed in and I went for Rock Slide. I get the Flinch, which is huge. That's talking about payback for him critical hitting my Gengar right there. Because uh, he definitely could have Dragon Danced up and put, well, he would have at least been able to KO this right here. He would have been able to put some solid damage on my Fortress before I hit him with the Volt Switch. So, that was kind of huge that I flinched him. Um, I figured that he's just going to go right for the Mega Evolution and hit me with the Grass or Dragon type move. And I needed to see what his Grass type move was. With my Raikou's HP as low as it is, I no longer have a Wish Pasher on my team. If he had Giga Drain, I could live Giga Drain. If he had Leaf Storm, I cannot live Leaf Storm at this HP level. So I wanted to check to see what he had. So we're gonna go out into Raikou, and then we're gonna hard switch back into Fortress. And I just need to see what he has, and he actually goes for a substitute. Did not expect that. But since he went for sub, now I figure he does not have Hidden Power of Fire. I figure he had uh, either Focus Blast or a, a, another uh, Hidden Power in the back. But since he does go for a Dragon Pulse from behind the sub, he definitely doesn't have the Hidden Power of Fire. If he had that, that actually, that might have been the match right there uh, if he had Hidden Power Fire and if he had uh, Leaf Storm. But it actually turns out that he's a Focus Punching Sceptile because X-Square likes to run super original sets, as you saw also with his Glaceon. Uh, he brings in Glaceon on the Gyro Ball here, which is what he predicted. And he actually gets to activate his Weakness Policy, which is the item he had the whole time. So I was really happy that I didn't go for Gyro Ball earlier. And it's not like I predicted that earlier. It was just more important to me. Yeah, switching priority and to get rid of the, his entry hazards earlier. Um, he actually ends up baton passing it. All he has left are Sceptile and a Bandit Talonflame. Yeah, he didn't want to baton pass it to the um, Talonflame, of course, so he goes out in the Sceptile. But Sceptile is so fast that he's going to be KO'd by this Gyro Ball at that range of HP. So um, I was actually kind of worried. I think in this battle in particular, I had not PP maxed my Fortress's Gyro Ball, so I only had five. And at that point, when I used that one, I had four left. And so I only had one gyro ball left at that point when I hit that Sceptile. So that was critical that I use it at that junction. Um, now, I was tempted to switch out my Fortress here just to see what he went for. Just to kind of gauge whether or not he is banded. But since he locked himself into Flare Blitz, I don't have any reason to just go right out into Gyarados. Even if he critical hits me, it's not going to take me out. Um, and my Gyarados does have a little bit of HP investment because it's not max speed. But uh, yeah, we're gonna be able to take out the Talonflame here. And that was a really, really close, I think that was a 2-0 victory. But that was just a close battle, especially for um, someone that I haven't battled in a while. I think I battled him a lot back in 5th gen. But yeah, that was a good match. We got to see some cool, no pun intended, Glaceon action. So let me know what you guys think with Fortress being on the team. If you have any suggestions on things you want me to try out alongside Mega Gyarados, now that I have this team, um, I'm not used to running Hyper Offense. So now that I have the team more in a line where I like to play with it, it's a lot more fun. Uh, 
With Clefable on there, it just kind of would get stalled when I would go to Clefable, and then have to make a prediction and then hard switch out. But with Fortress, I can just full switch and keep my momentum going. So that was my idea in trying him out. Props to Guy uh, for mentioning him in the first place. So I hope you guys have a great day, and I will talk to you later. Bye bye now.